From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. One more corner pocket. Now here's Warchant.com's ass on Hunch of Andy and Corey Clark. Now that's how you let the beat build, beat build. That's how you let the beat build, beat Wake up! What is up, everybody? It's Wake Up War Champ, presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. Coming up on today's show, it's just words. Maybe on a screen, maybe playing through your speakers, but the words that came out of the coaches' mouths on Monday, I think it means something. So does Corey. We'll talk about it. Wake Up War Champ, presented by the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill, Tallahassee, Florida. 2475 Appalachian Parkway or on the internet, cptallybar.com. You can place your order to go online, grab it and go ahead, or just hang out. You should. It's great especially on Tuesdays, on Tuesdays, because the lunch special, Corey, is usually 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., but on Tuesdays, Bill just gets, Bill's like, hey, man, let's do it all day. Yep. I'm going to give him tacos. It could be soft shell. It could be hard shell, beef or chicken, but make it go all day long, and then I want them to hang out to 7 o'clock or so, and then we'll play trivia, and I'll give them money because I'm Bill, and this is the corner pocket. That's how we roll. So go there, everybody. Corey, will you be there? Uh, yeah, I'll be there for trivia. I was thinking I, my mind had already shifted to Saturday, Aslan, mm. because um, I don't know if I told you, but Stephanie took the extra point club. Well, she, they had a they had a viewing party at, at Corner Pocket for the Boston College game, ah. which, you know, you know, if a face mask isn't if, if a face mask isn't grabbed, uh, Stephanie might not have ever been allowed back in Corner <laughs> Pocket, uh, but they won the game. Uh, the Extra Point Club got to enjoy it, and it was a full crowded bar, as you can imagine, corner pocket for a Florida State game, especially a road game. So then I was thinking, like, man, if they beat Clemson this weekend, whatever the, like, three or four biggest plays are, we've got to get the security footage of it and show the reaction of the crowd. All right. Right? Isn't that always fun? Yeah. Yeah. Well, That's I mean, what I'm when saying. they win, so when I, they I, win, I, all this if stuff, but well, when sorry, they win. Sorry, when they win, yeah. I want to show uh, Keon's 61 yard. Touchdown catch to ice it. Mm. I want to so Trey Benson just run it over folks in <laughs> Renardo Green's pick six, Azaria strip sack. I want to show all that. Mm. I want to sh- I want to show the reactions to all those plays. I think that would be good content on our YouTube channel. Okay, well you know we so could just throwing that out there. But yep. yes, I will be there tonight for uh, trivia, uh, hoping to. Well, no, we finished fourth last week, so oh. uh, we got it. We got to bring up bring our A game. Well, I always wanted to see the footage from the LSU game last year after the block. PAT. I uh, saw it. Yeah. It's really cool because okay. everybody's like kind of, as you can imagine, deflated. Yeah. yeah. And then all of a sudden they go crazy. Okay. The problem is it's the night vision. It's uh, so you, it's oh, not Clemson a color. Will be daylight. Oh, okay, I gotcha, That's I gotcha. what I'm saying. You know, it's a night because it's at night. It's a it's the night vision security footage, uh, which isn't nearly as enthralling as seeing it in live in color. Do you Plus, th- we got to get away where we can hear the sound too, which yeah. we can. Yeah, never mind. The, okay. the security footage. By the way, I want to get this out there. He's got exceptional security footage. I want you guys to know that if you're thinking about doing un- something unruly, that you you can't get away with it. Okay. So why though? It's just a bar. I mean, it's not like you know merchandise for people to steal. But I guess you know people act the fool. You want to be able to yep. identify yep. who acts the fool. Yeah. Um, the the exposure in there is not all that bright even during the daytime though so I wonder if it's just always going to be that kind yeah, of yeah that's a good question we'll find out on Saturday we'll, we will we, we will. post those things to YouTube we will hey everybody if you haven't subscribed to WarChant.com we've thrown multiple offers your way I don't know when they're going to come when they're when they're going to expire I think this is for the week but this is a good one it's the big game special Corey it's for new subscribers mm-hmm. only so. Just think about it. If you were subscribed to WarChant.com, they probably would not have had a close game against Boston College. But you decided to be on the outskirts of this thing, to be on the outside, creates you know anxiety for the football team. So so join WarChant.com. Let the guys know you're with them. You're totally behind them. They'll play well. They'll reward you for that. And you'll get 50% off an annual membership. That's right, 50% off an annual membership for the first year. New subscribers only. It's the big game special. Go to WarChant.com. No promo code needed. Just... Uh, you'll see like a neon green at the top of the site. Click it, put your n- information in there, and uh, come home, man. Come on. Yeah. Yep. Come You've on. Waited too long. You waited too long. Yeah. All right, Corey. Uh, as we sit here, we'll be going to practice later this morning, watching the team. Just we'll, we'll see just how much they'll respond. We'll see if this edge that Mike Norvell talked about on Monday talked about on Saturday. We'll see if it's if it's there, if it's getting honed. Uh, but on Monday, we spoke to Norvell and all the coordinators. Uh, 
you had a really good question, really good exchange with Coach. Which you gotta, I don't know, Corey. Like, is you're having these questions with Mike, and he just goes on these like three minute answers, yeah. and you gotta stare back at him the entire time and be a a courteous man. Like, do you do you sort of start regretting these things, or you want to start feeding the questions to Matt or Ira or me so we can take some? Well, of I don't, the, I don't know, but at, at some point, it feels like we're falling in love. Like, <laughs> we. we Every every that's like the fourth time we've had like four minutes of uninterrupted eye contact yeah. where I can't look away. I can't transcribe because he's looking at me. I don't want to be rude. Um, and yeah, he goes on these long soliloquies. Um, but yeah, I what was funny about that one is I told Ira afterwards. I was like, man, should I have interrupt when he was done? Because that was the last question. Mm. and It was a great answer. Yeah. Or, yeah, I wouldn't I shouldn't even say it was a great answer. It was a great soliloquy. It mm. wasn't quite the question I asked. Yeah. It wasn't really an answer to the question I asked. So that's what I told Ira. It's like, should I have told him like, oh, that was awesome. Can you now answer my question? <laughs> Which would have been funny. But it was a go on the go on the video and watch it uh, on our YouTube channel. Uh, you'll see it. it. It really was a, a a good answer. The question was, um, how do you how do you draw the line as a coach from using the negative of Boston and all the bad things that happened in that game to learn lessons, but also you know, they went on a 28 nothing run in that game. They went on a 38-3 to run against LSU. They went on the, whatever, 66-6 to run against Southern Miss. Like, they've proven in all these games when they play great, they're awesome. They're one of the best teams in the country. So how do you, you know, poke and prod and show that, you know, let them know this isn't good enough by also letting them know they're good enough to win everything. Mm. And so that was where the answer came from. And he kind of... I don't even know. He meandered into a lot of different areas, but basically said they they're the, they tell the truth with them, right? They tell yeah. them what they're not good at. Yeah. They tell them what they are good at. Um, and, you know, he believes in that team. And I do too, honestly. Mm. Um, but they he believes in the team. He believes they'll come back from a poor performance. Uh, I think just judging from him, I think he thinks they're going to play really well. Mm. Maybe I might not win. Maybe it won't be good enough. I'm of the opinion is if Florida State plays well, they, beat they win the game maybe comfortably. Yeah, uh, because there. I think they're just that good. Now, if they don't play well, which we saw and we talked about yesterday, they can lose to anyone yeah. because they almost lost to Boston effing college. Yeah. The last part of your question was, how do you get that message kind of across to them? And he said, you can't be afraid of the confrontation. Yeah, so, that's right. But then after that, he kind of you know went on some other uh, tangents. But I do want to play this excerpt out of that answer that he gave you because I think there's there's two kind of boxes he checks off here uh, and, and one for the, the the defensive cynics out there when it comes to Adam Fuller so let's uh, listen to part of coach Norvell's response uh, to Corey's uh, very uh, nice question on Monday morning one of my favorite things from yesterday is you know I sit in there and we're in the meetings and you turn on the uh, turn on a play where you know we run we run Called up. There, there's a defensive call we we practiced 190 plus times since we started in the fall camp, and we busted it three times in the game, and like that, that's probably as much you know as much as we've done it. Like for that to show up with three MAs, you know, why does that happen? What occurred? And you know our players like they'll. I mean, there I, I heard ownership yesterday, and when you have to when you're an 18 to 22 year old and you're willing to stand up in front of your peers and say, look. I made the mistake there, right? For whatever the reason that it was, I right, I understand that. I accept it. I'm fixing it. It will not happen again, right? That's a that's a step in the right direction. I like the response. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, I like the response because he said that you know accountability is something that you want your team to always kind of have, and uh, you know it's obviously got to be a bedrock of, of having a, a strong program. But also the, the the play that he talked about or the plays. Uh, he clearly was not happy about the way the defense played. So I don't know where right. you want to go with this, Corey. If you want to talk about uh, maybe some of the things that he said, his, his opening statement, I think he said disappointed, unacceptable when it comes to talking yeah. about the defense. Um, and then the way he kind of brought that up in, in that sort of story, which again, somebody, listen, Adam Floyd's not telling them to, to let guys run wide open. There, there was errors back there and guys getting in front of their teammates and saying that, hey, that was on me. I think, you know, I don't want to get into the culture aspect of things, but doesn't that show, Corey, that they realize just how talented, how, you know, the amount of the opportunity that's ahead of them. And if, if yeah. everybody can just correct their mistakes, man, and get out of each other's way, this team can go as far as it can, they could, we can imagine. Yeah, and I, yeah, going back to the first point you made about Norvell not being happy, he, he clearly wasn't. He said it 
at the beginning and as uh, that was another long soliloquy, uh, like a five minute long introductory statement. And then, which is fine, he covers everything. But then, uh, you know, he also talked about, you know, I, I don't know, I asked Fuller about the play. He brought up that play on his own, the third and 17, which I know you guys are already tired of hearing me talk about. So I won't do it again. You know what I'm talking about. 31 to 10, game's over if you get a stop. You give up a 52 yard pass on third and 17. And he says on that play, we had 10 guys do it right. They got the signal. They got the coverage. They knew what structure the defense was supposed to be in. We had one guy that didn't, and that happened to be right where the ball was thrown. And then Fuller came back later and said the same things. Like, sometimes you make a mistake on defense, and nobody sees it. And then somebody the ball sometimes the ball finds the mistake. And it just so happened in that game, the ball kept finding the mistake. But, um, you know, I thought he said, he, you know, Norvell even said, he's like, look, that's happened far too often through the first three games. Maybe far too often isn't what he said, but he did say that's happened uh, too much in the first three games. Those kind of blown assignments, which I thought was telling. I thought that was kind of a, um, you know, an insight into where he views this secondary right now or this defense as a whole and this defensive staff is that, you know, it's one thing like last year, again, they, they, they weren't a great defense last year, but they didn't give up huge chunk plays. They didn't just give up, wide open passes and here you know remember the first play of the lsu game remember the second play of the boston college game remember the 40th play of the boston college game and the 51st play of the you know there were just there were open dudes way too often and you can tell norvell's kind of sick of it um you know so again at the same time his his offense did diddly poo uh in the last they had they had four chances to end the game they didn't do it at all so there's there was plenty of blame to go around but i did i did really like um the way he talked about the defense, because you know that's being addressed. Not that you didn't know that anyway, but he is not happy with it. Um, Adam Fuller is not happy with it. Um, but it is, you know, it was one kid that made a mistake out of 11, and they just so happened to find him. It's like, all right, well, if that keeps happening, get somebody else. You, you can't keep doing this. But also when he talked about the accountability, I think that's a, I do think that's a good sign. I do think it's a good sign when a player state like he seemed genuinely moved by whatever he saw on Sunday from whoever that player or players were about getting up and talking to the team and telling them that that's not going to happen again. That it, that it sounded like they apologized. They took ownership and they said, it's not going to happen again. It's good. It shouldn't. They're too good to look that bad. And they looked really bad through certain stretches of that game. What did Fuller say about the play when you brought it up? Uh, he said, I'm trying to th- remember. Bad I just eyes. about it. Messy eyes, dirty eyes. Bad eyes, eyes. yeah, he did say that. He, you know, he said, you know, they had just gotten control of the game too, and that third and seventeen, basically, um, it's a normal call. It's it's a call. They it's a it's something they rep over and over, and uh, get you know whoever they they didn't name names. They didn't throw anybody under the bus. I would assume they're talking about Kevin Knowles, just of how the play developed. But I could be completely wrong. It maybe it was supposed to be a linebacker that had backed up that far. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to just throw the – because I think people listening to this that remember that play would think, oh, well, that's a safety. That's Kevin Knowles. What is he doing backing up that far? But it might have been a linebacker was supposed to be uh, in depth, it had depth in coverage and didn't. So we don't know. But, um, but yeah, the, he said the same thing, that that's – it's communication um, and that they're going to keep working at it and keep repping it. He didn't seem as mad as Norvell did. <laughs> but I, I, think he, I think he was plenty mad. Yeah, I try to give Adam like an out of like when I ask him the whole fact of, you know, not only do you, when you lose a player, not only do you lose him, but you make the other guys around that loss like not uncomfortable, but they're having to kind of adapt and develop, you know, maybe some chemistry that they don't normally have. But they they mix and match so much. And I was trying to see if he'd give us something about maybe Akeem's loss being more than we anticipated. You know, because it seemingly good- was Kevin kind of falling into the crosshairs of the, the bad stuff. But that's a good point because it might have been like they. So I did a story that's on the website right now where, um, you know, we I I looked up how many they gave up 31 pass plays of over 20 yards last year for the whole season in whatever that is, 13 games. So that's I don't know, 2.2 a game. Well, they've already given up 12 this year in three games. So they've almost doubled their output in these kind of plays. And they gave up half of them Saturday. So they'd given up six in the previous two games, which is a normal number. Plus one of them was the 75 yarder at the end of the game when all the freshmen were on the field. Yeah. So the starting defense had given up five 
big chunk plays passing wise in the first two games. And then they gave up six in the game against Boston College. Is that a coincidence that Akeem Dent's not on the field? I, I don't know. In one of the pass plays they gave up, the only big pass play they gave up to Southern Miss was with Akeem Dent on the field and then grabbing his hamstring. So I don't know. It might just be a coincidence or they might really miss um, him knowing where to be because he's played so much more football than Kevin Knowles, certainly at that position. Um, and that, you know, then you wonder, OK, is he going to be ready this week? Uh, because is he that pivotal to the defense? Because that that's the thing, Aslan, is like last year they didn't give up. It, they didn't give up a lot of these plays, no, no. but they got run on. Mm. Well, now they don't get run on. Like they they've hemmed that up. Like I, you know, that Boston, like I said, that the Boston College running backs, I think, had 57 yards on 24 carries or whatever it was. Now I know they ran for whatever they ran for, but that's the quarterback. The actual handing the ball off to a running back, which is Clemson's going to do quite a bit on Saturday with those two backs, and Shipley's great, so he's going to get a lot of. They've been good in that department. But they've been 100 yards worse in passing offense allowed. Like last year, in 13 games, they gave up 165 yards a game passing, which was fourth and fourth best in the country. Right now, they're giving up 268 yards a game passing, which is 102nd best in the country. Hmm. That's how far they've fallen. Now, the flip side, there's two reasons. Number one, their offense is so good that everybody throws it a lot, I think. Like they, they've been, you know, they, and some of it was garbage time, too. LSU had gar- a garbage touchdown. Southern Miss had a garbage touchdown. Um, Boston College had no garbage touchdowns. Those were all you get. Those Quality. were all important. Yeah. Quality important. But also, they know. I, I think opposing teams know they can't run on them. Hmm. It's certainly not traditionally. Now we'll see. Clemson, that's their bread and butter. That's what they're going to try to do. We'll see if they hold up and can hold Shipley to I don't know three yards of carry, four yards of carry, keep him from hitting some big plays. But you know, 100 yards more, and it's only three games, so it's a small sample size. Uh, and Jane Daniels is very good. And apparently Boston College has the next Doug Flutie. So g- congrats to them. But, you know, the, they're going to they're gonna face some teams that want to run the ball. Can they stop that like they've been able to, which is a very big deal? And then if they do, can they then stop these teams from hitting just, just having guys running free? Just having guys running free. And don't you think, though, Aslan, that that film, the way these coaches talked on Monday, and that film that obviously they watched Saturday night and Sunday and then showed the players on Sunday, maybe even Monday too, I don't know, uh, that's got to that's got to get through, right? Oh, yeah. Like, that's got – if they lose on Saturday, they might just lose, but I can't – you just – it would be a really bad sign if, again, they, have, they give up six or seven plays of 20-plus yards – when there's just guys running free, because it's one thing to get Johnny Wilson. Mm. Like those, you, you, sometimes Johnny will or Keon Coleman, those guys are just better than the guys covering you covered them. And, but it's not like you look at this team and go, man, Azaria can't cover anyone. Renardo green's really struggling. Fentrell Cypress is a disaster. You're not saying any of that. Yeah. The corners have been fine, maybe better than fine. But they're not getting beat on just go routes. They're not giving up huge chunk plays because they just can't cover these receivers. They're giving up huge chunk plays because they don't know where to be. And yeah. that's that's the uh, that's what you hope gets solved here in the next four or five days. Well, that's the thing. The primary responsibility seems to be there, but when a guy like Castellanos is able to extend it, yes, that's where the problems sort of start to arise. Yeah. So I guess maybe we're hoping that Club Nick, despite his more athletic than you might think. That's right. Mike Norvell's words, not ours. Yeah. But we'll see. And Fuller. Fuller might have even said yeah. that, too. Uh, we'll we'll uh, co-sign on him, though. Maybe it won't be nearly as much of an issue. I mean, obviously, you need Florida State needs to clean it up and figure it out, but maybe Klubnik doesn't bring that kind of element. I think the difference will be Cl- the, what Cassianos did to him was he – you know, I, I'm thinking specifically about a couple of plays where he scrambles to his right, and now you've asked um, defensive players in secondary to cover guys for six or seven or eight seconds. Well, that's really, really hard to do. Um, but I don't, I don't think I, Klubnik will still run on them. I think Klubnik will hit some runs for first downs. He's a, he's a, especially in a game like this where maybe he's not overly confident in what he's seeing. They might use his legs more than than normally just to try to get him going and get some confidence. But he's not a guy that I think is going to extend plays like shake guys loose in the pocket. Mm. You know what I mean? 
Like he he can he, if he sees an alley, he might take off and run. This kid did that too, but then he also scrambled around, went right, went left. Jared Verse wasn't fast enough to handle him because he's a normal. I'm not normal. Jared Verse is nothing normal about him, but uh, as a defensive end athlete, but you know he's not a four three guy, so he couldn't stay with the with the Boston College quarterback. I think. You're right that the scrambling aspect of it, with they they face two elite scrambling quarterbacks, elite athletes. Literally, I don't, again, I don't know. I guess I haven't watched enough. You might have faced number one and number two in the country as far as uh, running ability by a quarterback. I mean, those guys are just next level. They're really hard to tackle, and it changes the way you rush because you don't want to just burn up field and give him a huge alley where he's going to, now he's got a huge alley to run. And if he shakes your linebacker, which he will, now it's a 25 yard run. You can maybe uh, long, a long winded answer here. You can maybe uh, that, that should be eliminated a little bit because you're going to rush normally. You're going to rush to try to sack a quarterback. You're not going to rush and try to keep like, just keep them in the pocket. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So the scrambling won't, like being able to scramble for eight or nine seconds, I don't see Klubnik doing that nearly as much as you were worried about with this kid and then Jaden Daniels too. No worries when you've got vitamin energy on your side, especially the Mood Plus. It actually says promotes positive mood, Corey, so they're a step ahead of us when we're talking about, well, sometimes we say mood, it might be my bad mood. Of course right. not. The vitamin energy Mood Plus promotes a positive mood. 260 milligrams of all-natural caffeine, that's your energy. But then there's also vitamins. There's vitamin B6, vitamin B12, and then the stuff that promotes the good mood. The chamomile flower extract, some lemon balm extract, passion flower, valerian root. Get you nice and relaxed. Feeling good. You should. The Knowles heading to Clemson. They're going to snap a streak. I'm saying that because I've got the mood plus through my veins. So do it as well, everybody. Go to vitaminenergy.com. Put in the promo code WARCHAMPBOGO. That's WARCHAMP, B-O-G-O. And then add another item in your cart. It'll be free if it's of equal or lesser value because that's how it works, the BOGO thing. Courtesy of our great friends over at Vitamin Energy that are Florida State alums uh, running the show over there. So, again, go to vitaminenergy.com, promo code WARCHAMPBOGO, WARCHAMP, B-O-G-O. Shake it and take it, vitaminenergy.com. Corey, defensively, I wanted to bring up some stuff we'll we'll get to here in a minute. But I want to get back to the edge, uh, this edge that they need to play with, this edge that – Mike Norvell said the team might have not had, or I think he actually said they did not have it clearly uh, after yeah. the game, and he said it on Monday as well. I think we both have an idea of kind of like what that is, like this killer instinct, like you know, you know, know, keeping your foot down, whatever, whatever violent terminology we need to use here. Uh, can you, is the only way you develop it going through moments like Florida State went through against Boston College, or is that something that, is intrinsically wired in you or you develop it in the in the preseason in these trips to Jacksonville and such when you're trying to come together as a team early on in a season because yeah. they they need it man uh, I, yeah. I, I don't I don't know like can you call upon it now if, if it's not there now like can you can you find it now you know I mean I just think it's there I, I you know I again Orlando wasn't that long ago in and, and again yeah. Yeah. six days later after the biggest win any of those kids had ever had they came out and were up 31-3 to three at the half. By the way, not a great showing for Southern Miss yeah. after that. But they, they held Tulane to 21 points. Yeah. Uh, they only scored three, but they held Tulane to 21 points, and you put up 66 on that defense. So, uh, or 59, I guess. Jarian, you know, he, he had his own. But, Represent. you know, I, I think, you know, that they certainly – an edge should not be an issue this week. That's – and so that I think Norvell was disappointed in that that they you know they were up 31 to 10 and then just lost focus. Uh, he brought up the fact that they had five penalties. Um, the exhale stuff game. again too. He did the exhale yeah. thing, where, you know. But you know he talked about how they had five penalties in the game. All five came after they were up 31 to 10. That's uh, good he point. He said four yeah. of the five were focus. Um, I don't know if Keon's OPI he considers that one or not. Um, but he said they were focused penalties up 31 to 10. And that was his message is like, man, when you get a team down, stomp on them. And what's weird about it, Aslan, is they had the first two weeks. They didn't give Southern Miss any hope at all. And they certainly didn't give LSU any hope after they got a two touchdown, uh, a two score lead. They put their foot down and ended that game. So they do have an edge. They have shown they can play with that edge. I just think 
again, I, I kind of come back to it being such a weird game. You, you played horribly to start the game. Next thing you know, you're up 31 to 10, and you have the ball at midfield about to ice the game. And Tate Rada and Jordan Travis, they're getting the baseball cap ready for him. Yeah. Literally, I think that they, like, where's his cap? As soon as they score here, um, and, and it just, you, once you turn that, once you turn that switch off, it can be hard to turn back on. I remember uh, back when, uh, during the 73 and 9 season that the Warriors had. Hmm. They got a huge lead on the Celtics. Um, and like literally in Boston, they had like a 31 point lead in the second half or a 29 point lead in the second half. They took all the starters out. The subs came back in. The subs came in and immediately gave up like a 25 to 5 run. And with five minutes to go in the fourth quarter, the Warriors were only up by like six points and they had to put the starters back in. And the starters didn't play well, ends up going overtime and they win then. And I remember the the quote from Curry, Steph Curry after the game is, yeah, you never, it always sucks to have to win a game twice. Hmm. Like they had won the game. They thought that, or let me put it another way. They thought they had won the game. And I just think, you know, after they'd done what they'd done the first two weeks, as good as they looked, and the fact that they hadn't even played well and they're up 31 to 10, it's just human nature to say this is good. We got it. And then one kid out of 11 doesn't pick up the signal on third and 17. And the next thing you know, and then Trey Benson doesn't fall on the ball. Toa Feely gets stripped of the ball, which never happens. Um, and, and then you're in a game. But, you know, I, I don't I just think it, I just think it was a it felt like a one off to me. Just a weird one off game. And again, we'll know more, or will we? Like, there's no way they're not going to play with an edge on Saturday, right? There, there can't be. Yeah. And there's no way they're not going to be dialed in this week. So, win or lose, I think you find out what this team's mindset really is. Virginia Tech's a great example, man. Syracuse. Like, I know you're going to get up for Clemson, man. You, you don't. We know that. Now, if you're three and one, or well, you're going to be either three and one or four and zero oh going into Virginia Tech after an off week. How are you going to approach that game? How are you going to approach it when you're up thirty-one to seven on them? Are you going to make it fifty-five to ten, or is it going to be a game in the fourth quarter and Jordan Travis is still having to play? I think that's for this particular problematic game. I think that the 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 the, the Virginia Tech game and Syracuse games will be a better litmus test for this one. It's just about can the offense get itself together and can the defense stop giving up wide open passes? In misdirection, they kept talking about misdirection too. Like they use their speed against them. Norvell said that a couple of times. Like defenses are – offenses are – and I think Fuller did too. Offenses are doing a good job of using our speed and pursuit against us. It's like, well, okay, we'll now expect it because they will. I, I can promise you in the first couple of plays they're going to fake a handoff to Shipley and – Klubnik is going to roll back to his right. Don't let a tight end be wide open right there for a 26-yard gain to give that kid some confidence. If he runs for eight yards and gets slammed out of bounds, okay, that's fine. Do not let this kid get going early because you're giving him those stupid layups. And so we'll see. That's That, to me, is what I'm more focused on than the edge. I think he just thinks – I think this team plays with an edge. They just lost it for, you know, that 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 – 45-minute stretch in Boston. Yeah, that's a good point, though. I guess they, they displayed it against LSU. So it's it's something that he feels they have, they possess. In Southern Miss, right? Like, yeah. I think that let's not dismiss the fact that what they did on defense against Southern Miss. Like, True. They, they dominated that offense. Although, again, like the, they, they only scored three points against Tulane the following No, I know, but two. it's easy to, like, be like, well, we, we, we just played six days ago. Yeah. We're awesome. This team isn't very good. We can take it easy. They were dialed in. And when they got up, they stayed up and beat the bejesus out of them. So I thought they, they showed it those first two weeks, and then that's why Saturday I thought was so surprising because didn't you didn't you think it was going to be 45 to 10? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I picked like 49 to 3 No, or I'm saying once they got up 31 to 10 and then got the ball back, I'm like, well, this game's about to be 45 to 10. That's what I thought, and that it just didn't happen. But, you know, they did have a 28 nothing run, so there was something positive there. Yeah, I mean, when they went up like – when they went up like 17 to 10 or something, I'm like, yeah, they're going to end up covering. Like when it was winding down the half, I'm like, they're going to probably get the ball back. 
They're going to do what they do, which is that period three sort of scenario. They're going to run down the field and score one more touchdown. And they're going to go into half up, you know, by two scores. They didn't, but they still came out and went on that run anyways. And I'm like, yeah, yeah they're going to, they're still going to cover. Uh, but the edge was not there, but the edge uh, does reside in them, which is a good thing. Uh, going back to the defense, I mean, actually, let me keep with offense. When you say get their act together or whatever terminology you used back there like two minutes ago, Corey, like, yeah. what, what is the, the umbrage you have with the offense currently? Because really just real, real quickly, because I know I said on the show yesterday, like there's nothing good about that game, uh, really, other than the fact that you won. I think the offensive line still played well. I mean, yeah. that, that Boston College defense was throwing some exotic looks at them, and that offensive line held up quite well. But what do you think it looks like for this offense to get its act together or get back on track? What were you well, thinking? Well, look, man, you you can't have OPIs on fourth and one. Uh, you know, I asked Norvell about that. He said it's kind of a bang bang play. He thought. If the ball's thrown behind the line of scrimmage, it's fine for Keon to be doing that. It wasn't. It was thrown a half yard in front of the line of scrimmage. He also said that Keon could run them off. Like, Keon can just run a, a go route to get that cornerback out of the way. Mm. He chose to engage. Seems like that's something they need to figure out for the next time because it was an awesome play call. But just those little mistakes. Um, and quite frankly, you know, Jordan Travis, who I thought played a, a perfectly fine game, that's almost too dismissive. Jordan Travis is really good, folks. You know, there are questions today. I listen to Jeff, love Jeff's show, but questioning about how well Jordan Travis is playing. And it's like, man, I just tweeted this before we started the broadcast, start recording. Before those last four drives uh, of the Boston College game, which count, they do count, Jordan Travis and the first team offense had scored on 17 of its last 20 possessions. 17 of 20. They had an 85% scoring rate in their last 20 possessions. And 14 of them were touchdowns. So the Jordan Travis has been playing great. If you just kept, you know, if you care for production and points and touchdowns. Um, but I, I thought that throw to Johnny, I, I don't, you don't need it in that spot. There's a first down right there. Keep the chain moving. You don't need a 25 yard gain. You need a five yard gain and keep the chains moving. Toa Feely's right there. Um, Isn't that you know, the thing, though? You're like the same way I keep bringing up Jared Verse when we talk on, about him on the show, or I'm asking the coaches about him. Like, if Jordan is as great as we know he can be, and it has shown in, in terms of the production rate he's had here, like he's got to be able to to make the right read. I mean, like make the right read on that third down, and and don't push it uh, to Johnny. I know that that's a yeah. really high bar we're setting. It might be unfair, but again, this is a guy that. Had Heisman expectations. We thought that you know he was at that level. I mean, so we're expecting that kind of play out of the, the quarterbacks. Well, that but have done I, great I guess my here. my point would be you have gotten that play. You didn't get the play in those final few drives, I guess. But I don't even those drives. You kept running on first and second down, or you threw it on maybe it was first down. I think it was second down to Toa Feely where he fumbled. Uh, and as Norvell alluded to, and as you pointed out astutely yesterday, that's going to be a huge gain if there's not a miscommunication. And I think in that instance, Keon was supposed to block and yes. didn't know it. I think, I think he got in his own head because of the OPI. Like, all right, this time no, no, I this guy that's, off? Now that explains it. So, no, because the OPI was later than that. Oh, okay. So, but that explains why he was blocking that guy when he should have run he should have run him off on that play. Right. But on the on the swing to Toa Feely, if he engages on that play and just gets in front of that kid, it literally, as Aslan said, might be a touchdown. It's at least going to be a 40 or 50 yard gain unless somehow a guy tackles Toa Feely one on one in huge open space, which doesn't happen. But Coleman didn't block him there. And then the next time he had a chance to later on in the game to ice the game, he blocked when he shouldn't have. So there, the communication efforts were all around. But I, I just think when you look at those four drives, man, what I was disappointed in was not the quarterback. Um, I'm disappointed in the way the starting running back is running. Hmm. You know, he had, he had eight yards on six carries in the second half. Um, and it's not like they're getting stoned at the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. I think there are, and you could tell the way Norvell and Atkins both talked about Trey Benson, that they know that it needs to get better. They also both believe, and I do too, that it will get better. Um, but that he, you know, he's not, you know, Norvell's very political about it. He's never going to throw anybody under the bus. He doesn't even say anybody by name. But he's like, you know, our running backs, I thought we had some run lanes there that we didn't we didn't hit hard or we didn't make the right decision uh, that I thought was there. Because, again, man, uh, the offensive line gave up zero tackles for loss. Boston College had zero tackles for loss. I think in the notes Florida State had, it's the first time in like eight years or something that they haven't given up one tackle for loss in a game. 
And it's also the first time that uh, Florida State had 10 tackles for loss. And Boston College had zero. And it's the first time in an FBS game that's happened in 20 years or something. Jeez. Just an outlandish stat. So I, I am of the opinion that the offensive line is just fine. Yes. They're not the Dallas Cowboys, but they are just fine. The running back's got to run harder or somebody else has to run for them. Um, that, that to me, is it, it was the bottom line. And that's what I was disappointed in late in the game. Is like, man, the season's on the line. You're 217 pounds. And you're, you bounce off tackles, man. This is what you do. And he hasn't done much of that at all this year so far. You've got to go exert your will and go get go win this game. You came back for a reason. Go win this game. And I didn't think – I the whole offense, really. I don't want to just single out Trey. But I just thought Trey didn't run like Trey can run. And you talk about having a fire lit up your butt. This game should certainly do that for number three. And also – the tailback, watch the tailback on the other team this week. That kid never tiptoes. Yeah. If there's a hole, if there's not a hole, it does not matter. He's slamming into you, and he's falling forward. That kid is, and I hope, like, there's some competitive uh, juices that get flowing for Trey Benson to be like, oh, you think you're great? Well, watch this. Because that's an element that hasn't even been really utilized yet in this offense. And I just told you guys they scored on 17 of 20 possessions. And they're averaging, they're still averaging 50 points a game or 48 points a game or something. Wait until Trey Benson looks like Trey Benson again. And then that opens up everything else. Um, and if he doesn't, I was thinking about this, Aslan. If Trey Benson continues to not, too many second and nines, man. Or third and, second and seven, you give him the ball, now it's third and five. It's too too much of that happening. If that continues to happen early on against Clemson, buddy, I, I think I go, I think I go run and shoot. Mm. And just let Jordan let Jordan cook. Number one, he's not going to be able to run much anyway, I wouldn't think. We, we haven't watched practice, so I'm not giving away any secrets. But if he's banged up at all, his element in the running game, his threat in the running game is is eliminated. Nah, he's so still, he was still taking shots. I mean, Alex Atkins pointed out on Monday. Like he's still – Well, the you know, one play after the, the, the drive that they didn't score. Those shots last for a few hours, Corey. Those shots last a little bit longer know, than five-minute energy shots. Oh, well, I think he meant shots as in he was taking a shot on the DB. Well, that too, what I'm saying, like, I'm sure he's going to have some sort of numbing agent probably. Yeah. And, you know, he, he can still probably play – uh, like a grown-up, you know. And you use Tate against Virginia Tech if you have to. you got a week off in between anyway. Yeah, yeah. But but the point being, they, they probably know, they're not expecting Jordan to probably be a huge factor in the running game. Maybe he will be. Um, but So they're going to have even more eyes on the running back. And if you can't get the running game going traditionally, and if your quarterback isn't going to be a threat, well, man, you've got some wide receivers, man, and you've got what I think is a really good quarterback, and maybe you do what Washington does. Like, Ooh, yeah, they've you got know it. what I mean? Like that kid is throwing every down he's throwing for. He's averaging like 480 yards a game passing. I don't know that he's better than Jordan Travis. And I certainly don't know that their receivers are better than Florida State's. They're they're fantastic, though. They're on par with I mean, they're they oh, Flo- Washington. Yeah, are. Washington's got some studs. Yeah. Mm. Crazy. Okay, so it, yeah. but, you know, Florida State always wants to run the ball. And Atkins said that uh, on Monday that, you know, they're everybody knows they want to run the ball. But I just think that. Rodney Hill needs to play more, probably, although this is going to be a unique environment for a kid that's never played in a game quite like this. Um, Hopefully he handles the moment well. You know Toa Feely. You expect Toa Feely, too. And I just – I want it – just like I want Keon to bounce back and have uh, an exceptional game, and I have all the confidence in the world that he will because I think he's wired like that. I would love to see Trey Benson do that, too. I would love to see Trey Benson run like an effing man. And I'm not saying he's not, he hasn't run like a man. I'm not, look at me, man. I'm 163 pounds. I'm not insulting anybody's manhood. I'm I, I'm saying that in the football euphemistic sense of I assume that's a word euph- euphemistic. Man, run like a grown ass dude. Like put those linebackers on there. Run through them like you did Miami. Like run with uh just run with authority. Run angry. If there's only a hole for three yards, get five. If there's a hole for eight yards, get 13. And if there's a 15-yard hole, get 50. Like, run over, folks. Because that's what he's not breaking tackles like he did last year early. Uh, but last year, he's, he, you know, he didn't start great last year either. 
You know, I was thinking about this too, Aslan, as I continue this long soliloquy. Are you still here? Can you hear me? <laughs> Are you still on the show? Is it just me talking? I'm looking up uh, some stuff from Washington real quick. They've, oh, okay, good. Uh, yeah, that's, go ahead. That's, how, that's why this show works. Yeah. I go on these eight-minute rants, and you have time to look up stuff. Um, then by the time I'm done talking, is not even uh, – <laughs> It's no longer relevant. But it's isn't okay. relevant at all anymore. But, you know, when you don't ever get tackled in practice, which Trey Benson doesn't, no, no running backs do, and then I don't know what he had the first two weeks – I know he had, what do you have, eight carries against Southern Miss? He might have had 12 or 13 against LSU. Nine against uh, Southern Miss. And how many against LSU? Can you look that up? I can look it up, but not. So I think he might have had 13, maybe, something in that neighborhood. That sounds about right. So less than 25 or right at 25. Well, you know, the more at-bats you get, the more reps you get, the more comfortable you are. Like, he doesn't, He he's only been hit, or he's only had people try to tackle him but going into that Boston College game, 25 plays in the last nine months. Yeah. So it, it's something you, I think it's almost like – I don't know that it's exactly like riding a bike. Like you've got to get your body accustomed and used to running people over again, to contact where guys are really trying to put you on the ground because nobody's tackling him in the legs in practice. So I feel like maybe that's why – you know, he should get better because now he's getting more reps. He had 16 carries in that game, I think, uh, against Boston College. So he should be learning from this more. Now he's got real, um, you know, it's like facing live pitching in Major League Baseball. You can get in a batting cage all you want, but the reps that matter are coming from a real pitcher. And and I think that because that pitcher is actually trying to strike you out and not just throw it right down the middle. So I, I think hopefully the more carries he gets, the more rhythm he gets. And it's not just in a game, it's in a season. Like I said, he what what I don't what did he have carries wise? Twelve. He had twelve against Boston College, twelve against LSU, nine against Southern Miss. So he's had thirty three carries total in this season. Yeah. Well, a, Jim Dalvin would have that in one game. Now I'm not comparing Trey to Dalvin as far as talent level, but you know some of these running backs, these really good running backs, Shipley for instance, they'll get twenty to twenty five carries in a game, so they get used to really quickly people trying to tackle him. Well, he had twelve, nine, and twelve. And those are the only times he's tried to been tackled in the whole, in the, like I said, since the Oklahoma game. So, uh, so yeah, I, I, I think that as the season wears on, he will look more like the Trey Benson we're used to. I would like to see that start on Saturday. And if it doesn't, either play 29 more or go five wide, four wide, and let Jordan just tur- get his pinnocks on. What did you think about Norvell's response to your question about Keon and, and his involvement in the game? A little, little sassy, a little sassy, I thought, from Mike. Um, and he's like, yeah, we don't go into a game thinking, they, oh, we're not going to give the ball to our... But know, then he kind of, in the moment, kind of questioned himself. <laughs> and it's like, maybe we should force it more. And he, he wasn't saying that sarcastically. Yeah, It was almost like he was talking to himself. Like, you know, maybe we should force it to our... And he goes, I don't want to say the word force, but we should come up with ways to get our best players the ball. And I'm like, yeah, you think? I mean, he might not ever coach another Keon Coleman. You think he will? Maybe Hakeem's that guy. Maybe Vandravius is that guy. Maybe who somebody else in the coming up in the system is that guy. But Keon, Keon is a uniquely skilled wide receiver. He is one of the best at what he does in the entire country. If you're in a two-point game on the road with Boston College, you can't look at the Spock score at the end of the game. It's not just that he had zero catches. He was only throwing the ball twice. And they were both jump balls. Like, you're telling me you don't have any other – and this is – look, they were scoring just fine and moving the ball just fine. I'm talking more about um, once the game – once it was 31-10, to 10, take a shot with my man. Mm. You know, they, where, what happened to the play against LSU, the first touchdown? Where is that? And if they're rolling that kind of coverage over there, somebody's got to be – and Jaheim was. Johnny had a nice day. I just think at some point – there's no way Keon is double covered on every play. And there's no way he's covered one-on-one by a cornerback well enough that he can't shake loose and get open. I think you need to dial up more plays for him because he's too good. He's too good to sit there idly by and really be a net negative when you think about the um, the punt return that was almost a catastrophe, the OPI, the miss block on Toa Feely, and then the 0 for 2 on 50-50 balls and the two-yard run on third and three. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you just you, you I, I just think – that's part of the job as a coach, and he's done a great job for the most part. He does get these playmakers the ball in space, uh, and they usually do really well. But I just feel like, you know, Keon, get Keon, Johnny, and, and Jaheem going all in the same game, and good luck. Yeah, That's a wrap. 
by the way, UW's got three receivers with 300 or more yards, and they've got a tight end uh, that's got 100 yards receiving and four touchdowns. So they got Roma Dunzi, who is a four-star from Bishop Gorman in Vegas. Jalen McMillan's a four-star they got uh, out of high school, too. And then uh, this Polk kid transferred in from Texas Tech. So they've they've got some dudes. And well, they're Penix putting up guy. numbers. Yeah, man. But are they – like, are they going to be – I think the Odunzi kid is. I think he's like a Like prospect. draftable, yeah, like yeah, Keon yeah, and Johnny? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think okay. he's a prospect, so – uh, yeah, man, they uh, they play big boy football in Seattle. Shout out no, to them, I man. know. I just didn't know if they were product. You, you see a lot of receivers put up huge numbers that are more a product of the system. They're still good, but yeah. are they the NFL caliber guys that we think Johnny and Keon are? That's that's what I meant. MyBookie.ag, use the promo code WARCHANT for an instant cash deposit bonus. Florida State still a one-and-a-half-point favorite against the Tigers this noon Saturday in Clemson in Death Valley. 55-and-a-half the total points. I like Florida State in that game still. I'm really curious what Scott Van Pelt's going to say. Uh, he's like, oh, Clemson at home? Getting yeah. points? Um, but it's like, come on, Scott, don't get don't get lazy on me here. Uh, yeah, but it's not wrong. Yeah, yeah. Heisman Trophy odds. Jordan's odds have uh, slimmed down. He was like plus 1,200, plus 1,150. Now he's plus 900. Only Quinn Ewers, the aforementioned Michael Penix, and Caleb Williams – uh, with odds that uh, are better, although they're you not know, better because you wouldn't make as much money. But I digress. Yeah, you know what helps him, and I know we're in the middle of an ad, so this is this is for all our my bookie fans. Yeah. Is he will? It would appear the way the teams on the schedule are playing, he's going to have more marquee games than we thought, mm. or more games where people are paying attention than we thought against ranked opponents. Yeah. So that always helps when you're chasing a trophy. Just throwing that out there if you're interested in the plus nine hundred. And Florida State as a team plus twelve fifty to win it all. Ohio State, Texas, Michigan, Georgia, the teams ahead of them. So I, I would assume plus 1250 will get whittled down after they defeat Clemson this weekend. So hop on it now. Go to mybookie.ag. Be responsible. Set a budget. Follow it. Discipline. Do it. Use the promo code WARCHAMP for your instant cash deposit bonus. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere over at mybookie.ag. Last thing on the way out, Corey, uh, defensively, I know, I know you asked Fuller about the, the thought process that went into blitzing Azaria towards the end of the game there. I think Renardo came on a sa- on a on a corner blitz and got a yeah. sack in that game as well. Man, I I don't think they're gonna you know change their identity on defense. It seems like they like what they have in their front four, which I think everybody yeah. can agree is really talented. They got really good cornerbacks. Those linebackers are good enough. Man, there was I think that I don't know if I don't know if it wasn't the fourth down, uh, but man, there was a there was a stop on the goal line where Castellanos was about to score or tr- get close to the, the first down marker, and he kind of put his hand on the offensive lineman who was in front of him because he's like, I'm just going to follow you the entire way here, big dog. And Tatum Bethune came in and absolutely yeah. like leveled that offensive lineman. They all went down in a heap. So uh, you know they are who they are defensively. But, man, it would be nice. Uh, you know, I'm not saying, like, go hold Dick LeBeau, amoeba defense, guys just roaming around. You don't. But, man, it would be nice to see some – diversity in, in play calling a little bit more. I don't necessarily want to say being more aggressive and blitzing guys, but just this kind of like, man, this is the way we line up every single time. Seemingly this is what we're going to run. I, I don't know, man. Have we seen stuff in practice? Not specifically, but that there might be some different looks that we anticipate them rolling out against Clemson because that'd be nice. I think I have not. I think they kind of say, this is what we are. Um, now that might be changing. Um, I, I would, what I would like to see Aslan is you face the kid that was making his second start, and I don't think he's – he didn't seem confused by anything you did. Yes, exactly. And yeah. now you're facing a kid who's making his fifth start and by far the biggest start of his career. And there's going to be real pressure on him. Like, obviously, there's pressure on Florida State, but there's pressure on this kid because, yeah, man, I know they, they played well against uh, FAU and, and Charleston Southern, but it's number three Florida State rolled into town. Like, this – he has never played in a game like this either. And – it would be really nice to confuse them. Yes. Figure out a way to confuse them. And I don't know if that means, you know, blitzing guys up the middle and then let pull peel and burst back into coverage or Peyton back into coverage, like changing sight lines, getting in the way of, you know what I mean? Like, um, I think they did that a couple of times, Boston College. They did. Where, the, 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 first, the first third down where, where they had to sell for the field goal, 
they 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 showed six. They ran six, but at the last second, the defensive end stopped and started backpedaling, and he got yeah. that throwing lane. So yeah, that's right. He got in a throwing lane. That's yeah. right. Um, yeah. So I would like to see a little bit more of that. Um, you, obviously, just play sound fundamentally. Don't get run over, and don't let <laughs> Shipley take over the game. And you like your chances. Um, yeah. But yes, I would like to see the kid confused. Uh, that is one thing that. Um, you know, I, I thought they did a fine job with Daniels, honestly, and they certainly held neighbors in check. Yes. Um, and Mississippi State would love to have a Renardo Green on their team, apparently. Um, but, you know, I, I just – that that game was so befuddling. And you, you wonder – you just hope that it's – it's uh, you know, they, they can get back to – if you're going to nickel and dime them down the field, then do it. At least you had to earn it. But don't give them 70 yards in two plays like you did and get that kid going. I'm going to keep harping on that this week. If you can start the game strong and get that kid being not confident, because I think he's, whether it's false confidence or real confidence, he's going to be confident going into that first drive because he's had some success here the last two weeks. Now, it might be, you know, fool's gold because of who they played, but he doesn't know that. He's 20 years old, and he thinks he's going to play in the NFL, and he's awesome. He's going to win a Heisman one day. So he has confidence in himself. Well, show him real quick that this is an FAU. Mm -hmm. Real quick. And then see if that confidence is still there when it matters. So that just quick giving up. Quick, like LSU, I know you, got, you ended up getting the stop because they went for it and didn't get it on fourth down. But quit giving up these huge plays on the first drives of games. And then all of a sudden, this kid's, you know, feeling good about himself. Um, but, yeah, I would like to see that. That's a good point, Aslan. I'd like to see I'd like to see some variations defensively where you can tell the quarterback is confused because yeah. you didn't see that a ton uh, on Saturday. And the, the problem was, even if Cassianis was confused by what he saw from the secondary, he's still that he's still, you know, a magician running the ball. And getting in and out of all these, just doing crazy stuff anyway. So even if he was confused, he could use his legs to get out of the confusion. Klubnik, again, is a good athlete. And he's not just a good athlete for a white kid, which is what all this coded language is <laughs> when they say he's a better athlete than you think. That just means he runs pretty fast for a white guy. No, he is a real athlete. Like, yeah. he, when you watch him at full speed, you know, he's a, I would say he's a 4'6 kid. Like, he can move. Yeah. Um, but that's not his game necessarily. Uh, so he's going to want to – he thinks he's an NFL quarterback. I don't know that Cassianos thinks that. So he's going to try to show off his arm, which is legit. He has got a howitzer as yes. an arm. Uh, doesn't always know where it's going, but he can really throw it. So make him throw it a couple of times to you because you've given him a look he hasn't scouted for. I'm kind of curious to see how – it's a great slate. So all of you, yeah. uh, you know, that aren't going to make it to Clemson, enjoy the weekend. Uh, Low-key, kind of excited to see. I'm going to check the box score for sure with the Louisville-Boston College game because Halfley, man, Halfley was really crestfallen after the game and, and kept saying that like, he coached that game to win against Florida State. Like, he yeah. respected the hell out of them. But he also said, like, this team has grown. I, I, th I think he might have even said that this might be the best team that I've had since I've been here at Boston College. So, again, whatever happened against Holy Cross, certainly they did not play that way against Florida State. So, Curious to see how they're going to look against Louisville. If it's and how that kid looks in particular, right? Yes. yes. Like, can Louisville hem him up? Because yeah. Florida State, he had 400 yards against Florida State, and Florida State should have a better defense than Louisville. Yeah, so that, that Boston College fan is like, all right, like, this is what's, we'll know how Thomas really is. We saw Holy Cross, saw Florida State, now we we'll know who he really is. Yeah. And then you at home is like, all right, we've seen the way they looked against LSU. We saw the way they looked against Boston College. Now we're going to see who they really are against Clemson. And, um, again, I think it's going to work out in our favor. So, my game pick was kind of made the other day, but I'll, I'll hone it up here as we get the War Chair Report later on this week, and we do a couple more shows. We'll bring somebody in from the Clemson sphere as well to uh, break down the game later on this week. We'll have a live show Thursday at 6 o'clock for you. Uh, but before all that, we'll be at practice. So go to warchant.com, sign up if you're a first-time subscriber. New subscribers, again, 50% off the big game weekend promo. Just go to warchant.com, no promo needed, to take advantage of 50% off for an annual membership. Seminal headlines with Corey Clark, Irish Show Fell, and Jeff Cameron coming up later from 1 to 3 o'clock. So check that out as well. He's Corey. I'm Aslan. Thank you for listening to Wake Up War Champ, presented by the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill.